welcome. Uh, first of all, welcome to the um, to the Swedish Junior Hockey Podcast. Um, we're going to go right into it today. We have with us Philip Vermegord, and uh, welcome. First of all, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for having. This episode is brought to you by Scandlux, your home for Scandinavian luxury products for the U.S. market. You can find us at scandlux.com. Since we have launched this podcast, always start with kind of an introduction and give you the opportunity to, for the uh, vast audience out there, uh, both in Sweden and, and the rest of the world, who is, uh, tell us a little bit about Philip and, um, and uh, where you come from. Uh, I'm 35 years old. Uh, I'm from a small town called Vanamo. It's uh, 70 kilometers south of Jönköping. Uh, it's a little bit easier to understand where I'm from if you yep. refer to a bigger city. Yeah. Um, grew up there. I started playing hockey at a very early age. Um, did a lot of sports. I've been as a kid. I had trouble sitting down, so sport was a natural thing for me. So awesome. I was everything from fishing to skateboarding, snowboarding, hockey, of course, um, soccer, you name it. And uh, I lived there until I was 20 years old. And uh, I understood pretty early that I wasn't good enough as a hockey player to, to make it. So the second best thing I knew uh, when I was teenager I uh, was working out training I, I love that uh, especially in a group um, so I uh, applied for a three-year course at the University of Ecuador when I was 20 21 okay uh, and I uh, I got in so uh, the program was called coaching and sport management. So it was for three years, uh, and I stayed there for uh, three years, uh, and it took off since then. Uh, met my uh, beautiful girlfriend there, so and she's from the East Coast. Uh, so we moved to Kalmar uh, a year after I was done in Vecco, and that's how I got in contact with Eco Skasham after a while. And so let's give everybody a little bit of a geographical um lesson to uh for you that are listening and pulling out google maps and if you write if you put in kalmar where is kalmar if you want to for those who don't want to google it so it's the southern part of sweden uh on the east coast uh so it's pretty close to uh an island that's called Erland. So it's uh if you look at the southern part of Sweden on the right side of Sweden you can see um, an island there, and it's approximately in the top of the island. That's where I'm at. Okay. And what's Oskarshamn? Oskarshamn is the um, Kalmar. So how far is Kalmar from Oskarshamn? Almost one hour drive. Okay. But you live in Kalmar now? I used to. Uh, okay. My, my job took me elsewhere for, for two years, and then I... Had the opportunity to come back, and now we live a little bit north of Oskarshamn. Yeah, we're not going to mention the team that you went to um, for for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Since I'm from Lexan, we don't we don't talk about Mura <laughs> much, but uh, <laughs> no, let's. But but actually, no. We Mura is a beautiful town, and and uh, we joke about it all the time. But um, what was your experience up there? A little bit different geographical region than than the southern part of, of Sweden. Yeah, um, for me, it was a great experience. Um, my first time uh, getting out of Småland. Yeah. Uh, and uh, moving in here, if you're from Småland, it's, uh, it's one way of living, more or less. And that's, I guess it's the same thing wherever you live or wherever you grew up. There's just some kind of culture that you get brought into as a kid. And when you move, uh, 
that changed because you moved to something else. Yeah. And uh, my safety zone was hockey. And that was the reason that I moved from the beginning. But it was one of the best experiences so far, even if uh, the result didn't go our way as we wanted, uh, hockey-wise. Yeah. Uh, but two years up in Mura, uh, <laughs> the biggest rival, the biggest rivalry we got was against Lexand, and we can get a get a little bit in deep with that a little bit later on. But yeah. for me, it was uh, for my personal uh, development, it was the best thing that could happen. I think. So, and I, and I forgot to mention. Uh, so, so what is the what position in Eco Oskarshamna, which is a which is a a, a really good organization. Tell everybody what your position there uh, is right now and has been. Okay, so uh, I actually started in Oskar in 2015, I think. I checked <laughs> Elite Prospect before we had it on. Yeah, I've got it up here on my phone <laughs> next to my computer. So, yep, yeah, 15, 16. Was, yeah, 15, 16. That was the first, uh, and we were in Hockey Auschwitz, and second best division in Sweden at the time, and it still is. Um, before that, I got in contact with the junior organization in Oskarshamn at that time. So I actually had an internship, more or less, uh, for I think one or two years before I got the opportunity to uh, be the head strength and conditioning coach for the men's team. Uh, and um, I did that for... Uh, three great years uh, before I actually got the call from uh, Mura. <laughs> and, and then you came back in 2021, back yeah. to the same, same organization. And, yeah. then, and then you've been the head strength and conditioning coach there since then, right? That's correct. Uh, it's actually me and my colleague, Janne. His name okay. is John Hammar. Uh, so, um, I'm uh, responsible for the junior section, more or less, and he's uh, the head strength and conditioning coach. Awesome. So on the men's team, I'm more uh, an assistant strength and conditioning coach now. So I think this is a great opportunity to talk about, you know, Oskar So uh, back when I was growing up in Sweden, I live in the U.S. now, but when I was growing up, nobody ever heard of Oskar Sham. It was the big clubs. Oskar Sham was not one of the big clubs that was um, even mentioned, uh, yeah. never heard of it before. Yeah. And then they kind of uh, uh, advanced slowly but surely and, and has been, um, been up now in the SHL for a few years. Yeah, that's correct. And I think the reason why we're, we're taking steps, uh, both on the junior side and youth side, then also on the men's side is that you actually have progressed. The standards have been progressing over time and that's a culture thing. Yeah. And you need, uh, in my opinion is that you need to change a culture before you change the persons. And then you need persons that actually have the experience and the knowledge, how to do that, how to work with people, because that's the main thing you need to work with. If so, you're going to say something. So, Oskar Sham, uh, how big is the city, for those who don't know? Uh, 20,000 20, people, I think. Between eighteen and 20,000 people. I mean, it's a really, really small, small town. Mm -hmm. If you compare to the big metropolitan areas of Göteborg or Stockholm. Yeah, those are big cities. Yeah, sure. those are big cities. And so... It, so uh, over here, we talk about small market teams, and Oscar Sam is a small market team playing in the top division. What so uh, as an organization, um, and, and and not necessarily rooted in a hockey culture in Oscar Sam, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What's what's the main? Um, so historically, what's been the main sport in Oscar Sam? It's actually been hockey, I think. It, it has been hockey, okay. It has been hockey. I know they have a soccer team. They play in Division One okay. now. Um, and they also have uh, what we call East Bandy. Uh, yes. 
It's like soccer on ice, but you play with sticks, skates, and a small orange ball. So the North American market probably never spent any time learning anything about Bundy, but it's B-A-N-D-Y. So do a Google search or YouTube on, on Bundy. And uh, uh, it's interesting how some cities have like uh, lean shipping is a, is a, or a, no lead shipping. I think I can't remember which team. Yeah, I think it's lead shipping. Lead, lead shipping. Um, we were there three years ago in the summer and, you know, hockey, they got a really nice rink. We went to the rooster camp there and, um, and the sport there is, is, is Bundy. Um, yeah. And we're going to, uh, so my son is playing in Fallen for the fall and Fallen is a good example of a really, really big um, city. And the main sport there is Fallen BS Bundy yeah. Yeah. and um, not necessarily known for hockey. So, um, so interesting. So, if you're looking at, so I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to pull up on elite prospects. I'm going to put Oscar Sham. Yeah. Uh, and it's Oscar. Yeah. And Ham, which is Harbor. Uh, exactly. so, <laughs> so it's pretty impressive. SHL for the men's adult, uh, the A team. Yeah. J20 national top division in J20 juniors. And but not region in J18, which exactly. used to be J18 elite. Now it's called region. So playing in division one, which is the second level in J18. Exactly. So and we were, we were actually playing and releasing <laughs> things there this year. And we actually, we missed that chance, unfortunately. And it breaks my heart because I know how hard our boys actually were <laughs> thriving for that spot in the highest division in J18. Yeah. Um, but super but, competitive in, in, and it's broken up into regions. Um, but how long have they been in J20 national division for the, for the older juniors? Uh, it's ever since the men's team went up to the highest division. Okay. Oh, so here in Sweden, if you have a men's team that played in the highest division, you actually got a spot in uh, J20 National. Okay. So in Oskarshamn, is there a uh, gymnasium? Yes, there is. LIU or NIU? LIU. Uh, so, so there's so still. How does, oh, yeah, sorry. So, so how does that work in from your viewpoint? When, uh, which kind of explains a little bit of the competition you guys are a little bit different than the big clubs and we'll talk about Mura as an example where Mura who has been up and down in SHL to Allsvenskan in the in the top division plays in the J20 national yeah uh, in in the juniors but also has an NIU uh, yeah. program and so the gymnasium which is going to be the this year the, the it'll be the you the the 2006 birth year will be the first year um gymnasium players this year so they're going to be uh si they're 16 turning 17 exactly this season a little bit difficult to compete with um the big big clubs that has been established when the, when the best of the best are going to try to go to a national gymnasium program, right? Exactly. And that's still something that we need to work on. Um, we, we probably at this time and or at this point of uh, where we are, we, we don't get the, the top uh, prospects yet. Yes. But we're still in working progress with that. And that means that, we have. We probably don't have the biggest facilities. We probably don't have uh, all uh, those uh, fancy uh, stuff that money can buy. Yes. But what we do have is really, really high-end uh, staff, and that's what we we're building from. Yeah, that's and it's really, very, yeah. It's really interesting, and 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 a small market team, um, and. Uh, 
uh, what what a lot of people don't realize is that you have relegation um, in every level uh, from from J18 to J20 to to the adult uh, leagues. Yeah. If you don't if you don't do well, you have the chance of um, um, getting relegated to a lower division. And if you do really well, you can you can push yourself up um, within that. So. Exactly. So, um, and, and, uh, this is your full-time occupation now, right? Yes, it is. Uh, oh God, <laughs> I like to do a lot of stuff, right? This is one of them. Yeah. Used, I used to have my own uh, business, yeah. uh, parallel to doing this. I used to be my first year as I had a strength and conditioning coach in Oskarshamn, which was back in four, uh, 15, 16, I did this part-time. Yeah. And I had my own company on the side where I had my own clients, like personal training clients. Um, and now I'm actually in a trainee program for something called Stack Academy. Stack is a company that um, educates a strength and conditioning coach. And I was actually looking through uh, all the teams in the SHL and I could count that nine out of 14 teams actually have a strength and conditioning coach that went to Stack Academy and their education. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, so where is, let's talk a little bit about kind of Swedish Hockey Federation and the clubs and where you feel that the level of focus is on um, strength and conditioning now and the focus and how that's changed since since you got started, you know, so yeah. like seven or eight years ago in at this level. Yeah. Oh, um, oh God, this could be a long shot. I'll try to narrow it down a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's keep it, let's keep it in between the guardrails. Yeah, sure. Um, everything today is more uh, individualized. That That's something that we, uh, need to take in account because that's it's not a team anymore it's people within the team we need to work out with we need to train them we need to do the right rehab we need to see um, if they're eating right or whatever when it comes to that so we do a lot of strength and conditioning tests to like evaluate evaluate every person so we give them the right uh, uh, recipe so to speak yeah they can be working on their weaknesses and still maintain their strength. So what seasons, I wrote down my notes here too. Uh, so now i um, sitting here in, in the middle of July. What season are you guys, what season are you now? And how do you break the calendar year into, you have the in season, you have the preseason, you have the, the off season, or I'm not sure what you call it, but what, yeah. what seasons are in your calendar, so to speak? And where are you now? Right, right now we're in a phase, uh, we, we divide it into different kind of phases and we start usually here in Sweden, uh, the season ends, um, if we take for example our J20 team, national team, uh, J20, um, they went for two weeks, three weeks of vacation in the beginning of April. And then around 25th of April, we started up again. So the first thing we do is that we evaluate everyone that's on site. And then we create different kinds of training plans for, uh, for, the, for the guys. And we send those kind of plans out to those players that probably not on site, that's probably going to come in August. Uh, and then we work with stability, mobility from the beginning. We need to make them... Uh, strong and uh, um, solid enough to actually go in to lift heavy weights. Uh, my experience is that you're, uh, you don't want to do that kind of uh, training because it's not that fun to do. <laughs> it's, it's more fun to do explosive stuff, but to be able to do that, you need to be, uh, have a solid foundation. Yep. And where we are right now, we're lifting heavy weights and uh, we're doing a little bit more of explosiveness right now because that's the kind of training phase we're in. And I know that the guys that I'm working out with and the team that I'm responsible for, 
are ready for that, especially with those guys that have been with me for two years, three years. So within an organization like Oscar Sham, so you have how close are the adult or the SHL group of the, the roster there, which I'm sure some are on site and some are not yet. Yeah. And then you have your junior players. So what's the youngest player in, in, on the, in that training group? Uh, the youngest, I think, around 15, 16. Okay. Age, uh, especially for the J18. So they're knocking on the door. And some of those guys have been doing pretty well in their team before. They get moved up a little bit before so they can actually be in that kind of environment so they know what to come next coming year. But the dynamics of you have a 15, 16 year old kid to a 35 year old uh, seasoned professional. Uh, yeah. Both, both from a personality standpoint and knowledge, but then also a, from a physical uh, abilities and, 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 and growth side. So is that where the, where the individual training plan kind of comes in? Yes, uh, it is, because you can have two uh, guys, in, in this case, uh, you can have two guys that are uh, 16 years old or 70 year, 17 years old. But physically, as you say, it could be two or three years difference between them. Yeah. And that you need to take that in account, because if you don't, you're probably going to develop the, one of them, and you're probably going to end up hurting the other one. So that's why we divide them into different kinds of groups. So what we do is that uh, in the best case scenario, we do screening on everyone. That means like when, um, when you have to take your car yearly to, to check it, to see if it runs well enough to be driving on the road, we do the same thing, but in the massage room, we measure how uh, mobile are you in your hamstring, how good are you to activate the, the deeper abdominal muscles, for example. How do, how do you do those? Are those done by a certain certain kind of, are those tests the same across the board with most teams? Or is that something very unique and individualized in your club? Uh, it gets more uh, common now than it was a couple of years back because you there is no one size fits all uh, okay anymore uh everybody doesn't have to do uh heavy squats if you're not prepared for it and that's the biggest thing you need to prepare them for what's coming and that's a red like thread that runs through the organization from the men's team through the j20 to the j18 and even down to uh kids as young as 11, 12 years old in our organization. And one of the benefits of being a small club is that you work very closely to your colleagues, which means that you can always talk to them. You know you're going to meet them in the, in the hall. So you can have all these kind of small chats and how to plan the day, how to plan the week, even if you're in different teams. Yeah. And that's one of the big benefits with having a small organization, a small club where you work with very high end people that really know their stuff. Yeah. And so let's go back to the conversation of the junior, since you're kind of concentrating on, on, on those, I'm curious to see what are the common things that you see when they're coming up, you now have a new age group, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily you're going to get all the same, all the same age group, I'm sure you have one or two years of, of dependent on their talent. Yeah. But um, so, so first of all, when's the first time in the season of, of, of that you now see, this is now the new, the new group coming up. Is it uh, now or, or is it earlier? Like when you were talking about in April that you start the first kind of interaction with those guys. Uh, as soon as possible. Yeah. I would say, as soon as possible. Um, if I have, if I had a guy for one year or two year, um, I, I know almost where is where he at at his uh, progression ladder, so to speak. But if there's a new guy, usually they need um, 
uh, more of the stability uh, foundation. They need to be more uh, mobile. Uh, um, and of course, they need to be stronger in their midsection because that's where everything starts. So if you don't have that support, you're going to break down if you're going to put some heavy bar on your back. Yep. If you're going to take back spots, for example. So we want to build them. And me and Janne, uh, I told you about him before. He's yep. the head strength and conditioning coach for the men's team. We've been working very closely. And we wanted to build this kind of uh, progression ladder from uh, youth teams all the way up to the men's team. So when you're um, done, uh, when you're in your last year of J20, you're going to be able to generate the same kind of uh, reps or weight as a, um, one of those guys in the men's team. Yeah. So there's going to be a progression. And I think that's, that's one way of seeing it. But when you work with junior teams, if you have a guy coming in that's his first year on the gymnasium, he's 16, 17 years old. Uh, and this is one of my uh, biggest cornerstones when it comes to my philosophy is that performing is one thing, but to develop good human beings is as important or even more important. Explore uh, or explain that a little bit more uh, when you're saying what, what goes into that and how, what is your role there in, 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 because you're not necessarily the bench coach. Yeah. Um, because I, I'll see these guys so very often. They're at the rink all day long, more or less, if they're not in school, of course. Uh, and I meet them and I talk to them and I have conversations with them all day long. And I, sometimes you can see on people if they're not feeling good or on the opposite side, if they're feeling very good. So you talk to them and especially when you're a junior coach, you sometimes need to handle and talk to their parents too, because even if they look big and muscle and all everything on the ice, they're still kids, right? And to learn how to take responsible for your own actions, take responsible for your teammates, take responsible for uh, uh, being on time every day. Sometimes we have workouts at early in the morning and to handle that and to handle the school and to be uh, high end on so many different levels of your life at that early age. I know when I was 16 years old, I didn't know how to pay a bill. Yeah. So, so what's the, what's the biggest thing if you're looking at what are the top three things that you see the young kid that are coming in first year gymnasium? Mm -hmm. What's the biggest eye opener? Is it, is it diet? Is it load in terms of the, the training or is it sleep? Uh, or is it the, or maybe the fourth one, the, uh, the, the interaction with new teammates and, and so on. I, I would say all four. Okay. And that, that's like moving home for the first time. You don't have the security of your parents and then you need a, a good role model or you need a, someone that's adult that knows the area, that knows how the culture in the club works. So you actually get a little bit of a head start. Once you get there, uh, someone that actually can push you and help you from the beginning. Uh, you don't want to end up in a situation where you feel uh, unsecure about anything, or especially from a parent's perspective. Like Oops. if you send your kid to uh, to a school like seven hours away, you you want to know that there's good people taking care of your kid, right? Yeah. And yeah. that's been a very important thing for me like so how do you so how do you create that proactively and, and strategically um as a coaching staff yeah it's um it's very important to be to be uh, a good listener that that's the first thing okay nothing is too small nothing is too big you, you really need to be be open uh, to to what's coming and uh, and especially Sometimes it could be a little bit like in a group of guys where you at that age, you don't raise your hand in the first place. If someone asks you a question. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. And, and I'm curious too. I mean, you've been there. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay. Like you, like you said, you were not necessarily, I mean, looking at your elite, at your elite prospects profile, Mm -hmm. you you played a lot longer than I did anyway. And I mean, (laughs) you, you played at the division two and division three level. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you didn't make it to the NHL draft, but at the same time, so you went through hockey gymnasium. I didn't. Okay. So you, that's a, that's a pretty, you, not a unique, but a pretty valuable experience that, okay, there, a lot of these kids are coming to Oskarsham. They're not going to an NIU. So, which means that they probably were trying out for an NIU organization, but didn't, but were, they weren't picked. Yeah. So you've been there. Yes. And um, the, the most valuable lesson that I learned from being a hockey player and that I actually apply in my job on a daily basis now is that I've been benched. I've been outside of the team. Uh, all of those things that comes with the territory, which comes with being a hockey player. But no one doesn't really talk about how, how to handle that, especially if that's the first time it happens to you. It could even break you or make you even stronger. And that's one of the uh, point views that I got. How can we use that kind of uh, negative energy sometimes to actually create a positive environment and how you can take responsible uh, responsibility for for your own and how you can actually help your teammates. So within Oskar Sham now, um, explain to the the coaching staff you have so for J20, if since we're so you have a J18 and a J20 head coach. Yeah. They have assistant coaches. Mm-hmm. And and the two of you, you and Janne, are are roving between J18, J20, and the SHL team. Yeah. And are support staff to all three teams. Yeah. Yeah, you're touching a lot of people. Yes, I do. But yeah, I guess um, you also have the luxury of some come from J18, move into J20, yeah. some move on, some, some come in from other organizations, but they all have unique journeys on how they got there. Exactly. And for, uh, for those guys that come from J18 and going to move up to J20, that's a big step. Yeah. And if you're going to go up there as a player, that, that's what you want, but it's a new environment. It's different kind of demands from the coaches and from your teammates, especially those that's been in that level for two years. So if you're going to be able to perform, you need to feel good and you need to feel secure in some way. And if you have a coach that's been with you from day one, and it's the same coach, in this case, it's me, Oriana. If you recognize us, you always have a safe a safety point, so to speak, which means that you don't need to be worrying about that. Uh, and you actually have someone that you always, always can come and talk to uh, because we that's how we like it. If there's yeah. anything that's not good, just come and say it, tell us. And then when ha- we handle it together. And I, I would imagine that you, that you will spot someone that may not necessarily want to come and talk to you, but you go and talk to them. Yeah, sometimes. And that, that's, I don't know, as you get older, you, you start to see things. And especially when you get a little bit experience, add experience to that, then you, you can see things that you probably wouldn't if you haven't been in that environment before. That's, that's, uh, that's real special. So um, how much of it is physical? And, so how, and how much of that is mental? Um, I think as you said before people come in and come to us from different kind of culture and different kind of clubs Uh, some of those guys that I meet for the first time in J18 haven't even seen a barbell before Uh, some of them have been uh, taught real good foundations from the beginning from very early age Uh, if you come from the bigger clubs and if you've been through their youth system then you usually have pretty good uh, foundation. If you're from the smaller club, uh, it's almost the opposite. So my my job and Jan's job with the junior team is to create a foundation where even if they don't make the SHL team, 
they're going to be able to stand on their own and make good decisions on their own. Because if you go to a Division I club here in Sweden, you don't have to always have the luxury of being in good hands with massage therapists or strength and conditioning coaches or having people telling you what to do all the time. And you probably have a full-time job too. Yeah. Uh, so we that's also one thing of creating or helping people to gain the knowledge they need to have to still uh, – chase their dream even if they're not in our organization anymore yeah no that's really um that's really profound and 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 interesting and i i applaud you guys for having uh, it's it's clear um there's challenges i'm sure in a smaller organization but it's also um you guys have been successful and it's clear that you have a um a good team and a good common philosophy there as an organization that works that yeah. may not that may not work in a large organization or you or the the large organization philosophy may not work in 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 oscar Chan. so what's uh kind of wrapping it up here what's what's next on on your um on your calendar now you're getting into people coming in here what first of august some, something like that yeah, we actually have a, a camp uh, in the last week of July, which I'm going to be participating on. Um, so hopefully I'll see uh, some new faces then. And uh, that, that's, that's when I'm starting my work for this season. And uh, 1st of August, the men's team is going to be back on site. So it's going to be uh, good to see all those guys again. Yeah. Um, and until then, I have some uh, uh, workout schedules and training programs that I need to send out to some of the guys uh, that's just finished their uh, um, power strength training phase. So even if I'm on vacation, you're, you're never off. Full. You're never off. No. Well, so, it, uh, it's a testament towards your um, the relationship that you're building with your players and uh, – and I'm sure that whether they make it all the way to the SHL team in Oscar Sham or moving on to another organization, it's, um, that's part of the journey that, that you're on with your players. And, um, and, uh, and again, I applaud you for that. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, this will be interesting to kind of stay connected to, I'll be uh, checking in with you, um, as the season progress and, and, um, Maybe we'll have you back on uh, again and talk about um, be interesting to talk a little bit more about the stack program and 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 I'd, I'd like to get your perspective on you know how the Swedish Hockey Federation is pushing um, uh, from an education and 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 a philosophy standpoint where strength and conditioning is 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 going. Uh, universally be be interesting as well yeah because there is a there's a lot of things that we could uh, dig into there but that yeah. would probably be two and a half three hours more <laughs> yeah well and I, I i i really enjoy this conversation about you know the biggest takeaway for me in in this is is the importance of building relationship not just from a head coach and assistant coach but as a as a coaching staff Mm -hmm. uh, including you guys in strength and conditioning and how much time do you spend with the guys and, and um, uh, growing young men um, in, in the sport of hockey. So to me, that's uh, your integral in that. So that, that's a huge takeaway for me. Thank you. We are, I'm glad to, uh, that you asked me to be on your podcast and it's been a pleasure and I really hope that we could catch up again yeah uh, look up philip vermagord on elite prospects and oscar sham on elite prospects and uh and uh if you're in on the east coast of sweden go to the small town of oscar sham uh, right next to the island of erland before you jump on the bridge um and um knock on the door and i'm sure you're going to have a welcome uh Welcome, be a, welcome with a smile there. Always. 
thanks again. And uh, we'll stay in touch soon. Yes, we do. Thank you very much.